Let's drag and drop items within the list view to other positions. Also drag items to totally different lists. And lastly, also drag the whole list itself to other positions. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by creating our lists with the draggable items. Therefore, we have two different kind of data models. First of all, the whole list itself. And secondly, also each individual item which contains an image and the title itself. Therefore, we create our first model, a draggable list. And here inside, we put then a header inside. And this header is then later displayed here at the top of our lists. And secondly, the list has then all of these items inside. And therefore, we create here inside a list of draggable list items. And this is a new model class. And here inside, we put then the title and the URL image inside. And the title and the image is then displayed within one of our items. Secondly, we want to create then some lists with some data and therefore I simply create here a list of draggable lists and then we create here one list and put here a header inside and then I also put here different kind of items inside of this list. And I also create here multiple lists so I put here another draggable list inside with some items. All right, now we have the data to display our lists and also its items here inside. To create the user interface of these lists, we make use of this drag and drop list package. Therefore, we want to get started within our build method and here inside we want to create a drag and drop lists. And this comes directly from this package and here inside we need to supply some children and these are then all of our lists. And therefore, we want to create in our state some list of drag and drop list and this is basically a widget. And here within our init state, we want to initialize then this. And therefore we simply get here our all list data. So here we have all the draggable list with our data, which we have defined initially. And now we want to convert these draggable lists to our drag and drop list. Therefore we map here our model classes to our widgets and therefore I create here a new method build list. Inside of this build list method, we get then a draggable list. And this is then our model class, which we have created before. And we want to convert this model class then to our widget, which comes from this package. And here inside, we need to put then first of all the header inside. And therefore, we simply access here over our model, the header, which we have stored here inside. And secondly, we want to access all of our items, which holds them here, the title and the URL image. Before we do this, we also want to wrap here around our text some padding so that we have some space around all the sides. And with this, we have already created here the header of our list. And the next thing is to also build our items itself. To build the items, we have here the children property and here we access then our list items and we want to map each of these items then to a drag and drop item. And inside of our drag and drop item, we can then define a widget and this is then the widget which is later displayed here as one single item. So first of all, we display here the text of our item and also the image itself. And therefore, I have already created here the text by accessing here the item title. So this is basically here the title property which we have created within our item. And next, we also want to access the URL image to display our image. And therefore I have created here within our draggable list data every time here this URL image where I have put then a URL to an image in the internet inside. And now we want to display these images. Therefore we go back to our drag and drop item. And here within the leading property, we want to display then an image and we load it from the network. Therefore we put here also our item URL image inside. Also make sure that you give your image some size. So we give it here 40 by 40 pixels in size. And with this, we have now created here one specific item within our list. And now that we have created one specific drag and drop list widget, we can then display all of our drag and drop list within this widget here. And to make this work, you also need to implement this on item reorder and on list reorder. And therefore I have created here at the bottom two methods which are then implementing these. And we will talk later about them. And lastly, to make everything work, you also need to go to your pubspec jumble file and here inside you need to include then this drag and drop lists under your dependencies. And with this, we have created here this list which looks already pretty close to the design what we want to accomplish. 
Right now, if you try to drag and drop an item to another position, this seems to work. However, if you drop it, then it goes back to the origin position. Next, we also want to include here some drag handles at the end and want to improve our design of our list by giving it a white background color. And lastly, we also want to include here this drag handle for the whole list itself so that we also can move the whole list to another position. Therefore, let's get started by improving the design of our list. And here within your drag and drop list widget, you have first of all a list padding and this sets then the padding around your widget. Next, you can set the decoration of your list and therefore you have here this list in a decoration and inside of this box decoration, you can set first of all a color and I take here the canvas color and this is then here this white background color for our list items and we also want to make here our list a bit rounded and therefore you have here another property inside your decoration, which is border radius and here you can, for example, put a border radius of 10 inside. And now you see that here the white background color is also a bit rounded. If you want to have it more rounded, then put here a higher value inside. And if you want to have it less rounded, put a lower value inside. Next, we want to support that we can drag an item to another position. Therefore, we need to look here at this item reorder within our drag and drops list. And therefore, we create here a new method, which holds then all of these items. And here inside we need to reorder then our list item and therefore we call here set state. And here inside we want to get then our old list items, which we can do over this old list index. And this is basically this index of our list because we can have multiple lists. And this returns then here all of the items of one list where we have started to drag an item from. And secondly, we get the new list items and this is what we get over this new list index. And this means if you drag, for example, to another location, to another list, then we have here this new list. And this is then the items of the list which we want to get here. On the other hand, if you drag here within the same list, then the old list items and the new list items will be the same. And now we simply need to remove here from our old list items an item, which is here our old item index. And this means it is the index here of the item which we are currently dragging. If we remove our item from our list, then we get here every time the item which we are currently dragging to another position. And this item we want to put then to the new position. So if we drop our item, then we want to place it here inside. And therefore we need to call here new list items insert. So we insert it to the new list. And this is the list where we drop our item to. And here we put then our item itself inside. And we also put here the new item index inside to which position within the new list we have dragged our item. And now we can try it out. So I drag here an item to another list and you see it is also then going inside of this list. Next, we want to include here also these drag handles so that the user can see that he can drag this to another position. Therefore, we go to our drag and drops list and here inside you have a property which is called item drag handle. And now we want to create our drag handle. And within this new method, we create then first of all the vertical alignment. And later we will determine if our item here is a list or if it is an item itself. So in case our drag handle is here for the whole list, then we want to display our drag handle here at the top. And if it is only for the item itself, then we want to display our drag handle here within the center. And this is exactly what we define here with this vertical alignment. And next, we also want to define the color of our drag handle. So you can set here, for example, this blue color for the list drag handle. And for the item drag handle, you can then set here this white background color. And this is then here basically here the color of our drag handle. And now we want to create our drag handle. Therefore, we create a drag handle and put our vertical alignment inside. And secondly, you can also build then your widget, which is a drag handle. And therefore, we simply display here an item which displays our drag handle. And with this, we have here for our items every time this drag handle also inside. And we also want to create the drag handle for our list. Therefore, you need to go back to your drag and drop lists. And here you also include this list drag handle. And then we call here the same build method to build our drag handle. And now if I hot reload, you can see that this drag handle is displayed within the center of our list. And this is because the is list property is set to false and therefore it displays here this in the center. However, we want to display it to the top and therefore we want to put here this is list to false so that it is displayed at the top. And therefore I also put here this is list to true. 
and then it is displayed here at the top and we also choose here for our list a different color. And now you also can click here every time on the drag handle itself to drag an item and we also can click here on the drag handle of our list and then we also can drag a list to a new position. However, if we drop our list, then you will see that he is going back to the origin position. And to implement the right behavior, we need to go here to this on list reorder within our drag and drops list. And now we want to implement this method where we get then the old list index and the new list index. And therefore we call here set state and inside of this method, we want to remove then first of all our old list index. And then we get here the list which we are currently moving to a new position. And secondly, we need to insert then this list which we are currently moving to our new list index. And this is then the position where we drop our list to. So if we drop it to another location, then we want to also put it here inside. And now you can hot reload and can try to do it again. And if I drop it then to this other position, you will see that this list is also going to this position. Furthermore, we want to enhance the design of our draggable list. Therefore, we want to create here some dividers in between our list items. And therefore you go to your drag and drops list and here you can then include an item divider and then you basically define here a divider and also can set here some background color. And now we have here some dividers between our items and I have taken the same color which I have also used for this background color. So our scaffold background color is the same as our divider background color. Next, while you drag an item to a new position, you see that our item doesn't have here any background color. And this is also what you can change. So you can change the background decoration. Therefore, you can set here this item decoration while dragging property. And here you can then set the background decoration color to white. And this is then our background color while we drag our item. And secondly, you also can set a shadow around your item. And I simply set here a box shadow of the color of red. And I also give it some blur radius. And now if we drag our item to a new position, you see first of all that it has then a white background color and also we have some shadow around our item. For demonstration purposes, I have set the shadow color to red. However, in real applications put better a uh, other color inside. And now if we drag our item to a new position, you see here a black shadow around our item. And lastly, and most importantly, you also need to know that if you scroll to the end of the list, that you also have a lot of space at the end. And the same is also if you look here at our items, you see that here we have also some space at the end of all of our items. And the space at the end of the list is used so that we can later drag comfortably here an item to the end of our list so that we also have some space where we can place it. And if you want to modify this space, then you have here this property last item target height. And by default, it has then a space of 20. And I change it right now to 50 so that you also can see that you can increase this space or decrease this space. If you like, you can also set the same space to the start of the list. And therefore you have here this property at last item target height to top and then you set it to true. And now if I reload it, then you see that we have here also the same space at the top. So in case you want to have your list symmetric, then you can always change these to the top and then you change here the space to the top and also to the bottom and have the same space. And lastly, you also have some space at the end of all of your list. And this is because if you later want to drag then one of your lists and then you drag it here, for example, to the end, then you have here more space to comfortably place it. If you want to change the amount of space, which is at the end of the list, then you also have this property last list target size. And by default, it has a size of 110. And I reduce it right now a bit and now you see we have here less space at the end of our lists. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.